Hello and welcome to the Auntie Lisa show. So, I already picked out two things. One was Captain Ghostbeard, which I then had to call you up and figure out who Captain Ghostbeard was. Because I realised I don't know who Captain Ghostbeard is, but it turns out that's because you made him up, which is brilliant. Now I know, so that's okay. And I also picked out Gru. Now, I need to pick out some more, of course. From the red bag, we have a Triceratops, a very wonderful dinosaur. And hold on a minute. Oh, oh Christopher Alexander and Auntie Lisa. It's a miracle. And Andy. Hooray. That works. I haven't had Andy in a while. In the pink bag of, I think, random things. I know I should know. Invisibility. <laughs> okay. In the white bag of places. <clears throat> the park. Okay, the C would have been more useful fine the park and in this one i think it's transport a boat would be good ah the swamp ship oh, ho, ho, ho. that works right boom let's do this one day christopher alexander and auntie lisa decided to go to the seaside. It was a lovely day and they thought why not hit the beach, catch a tan, have a couple of nice things to eat and drink, make a sandcastle, catch some crabs. Uh, probably Alexander fancy catching crabs but I enjoy that and all sorts of exploring to be done so packed a bag of all their delicious treats and drinks and off they headed to the beach <laughs> and they arrived at the beach everything was fine the end joking when they arrived at the beach they noticed something very strange out in the distance of the sea. There was what appeared to be a big ship. And Alexander and Christopher looked at that big ship and they went, uh, Auntie Lisa, do they still make ships like that? And Auntie Lisa said, Sometimes, but not quite like that one, I don't think. And you know why? Because it was one of those old style sailing ships. A bit like they had in really olden times for catching fish and things like that. With great big white sails. But in this ship, the sails looked really tatty all around the edges. There was something not quite right about that ship but Alexander and Auntie Lisa and Christopher thought to themselves hmm, we should probably ignore it that's a problem for someone who's involved with maybe boats and we're just having a nice time at the beach so they started building a sandcastle <clears throat> now while they were building they received a phone call, which is why you should probably always turn your phones off anyway, or on silent. Yeah, they received a phone call and it was Gru. And Gru said, hey guys, there's something going on on the sea. We need your help. And Alexander and Christopher were like, oh, we're just having a day out at the beach. Do we have to help you, Gru? Because there's nobody else. And Gru said, You guys, you gotta help. 
You're the most amazing adventurers I know, apart from me, and I need your help. Wow. Before they knew it, Gru had zoomed up to them in his super cool boat that would also double as a submarine. So they all went, oh, for goodness sake, Gru. He just messed up their sandcastle as he crashed up the beach in it. And they were like, oh, you smushed it all up, Gru. What's going on? Anyway, Gru said, you got to come quick. you got to come quick, you guys. I don't know if I talk like this all the time. Anyway, and they jumped inside Gru's super cool, super fast speedboat slash submarine and started zooming out to sea. Now, they went closer and closer and closer to this peculiar ship. And they suddenly all realized what Gru already knew, which was that this was no ordinary ship. This was a ghost ship. Gru was like, see, I told you I needed your help. I'm not used to dealing with ghosts. And Alexander and Christopher were like, okay, we will help you. Right, I wonder whose ghost ship this is. Because this ghost ship does not look like the swamp ship. Just as they said the word swamp ship, what appeared over the horizon? No, it was the swamp ship. And they were like, oh, God, there's so many scary ghosts on that swamp ship. This is going badly wrong. And then they looked a bit further into the distance. Do you know who else's ship it was? Captain Blackpool, the most dastardly dog pirate that ever sailed the seven seas and then became a ghost and it appeared that the swamp ship and captain blackpool's ship were chasing the first ghost ship they'd spotted mm -hmm. so they were witnessing a ghost ship race not something you see every day and they were like what is going on? Now the first ghost ship appeared and it started to get closer and closer and closer to where they all were, just stood on board Gru's boat. And the ghost ship got closer and closer. And Auntie Lee said, can anybody see a Jolly Roger? Are we sure it's not a pirate ship? And Gru said, no, oh, I don't think it's a pirate ship. I think maybe it's a fishing boat and everyone went fishing boat you don't often hear about fishing boats being ghost ships was it full of loads of ghost fish Pfft, that sounds ridiculous well turned out Gru was a hundred percent right because the ghost ship got closer and closer to them and they looked through the ghost ship and in the hull of the ghost ship, you know what they saw? Loads of ghost fish! That's right, because that's actually where the ghost fish, the fish, would die. They get caught in the net and dropped in the hull, in the hull, yes, in the bottom of the boat. And that's where they die, because fish can't live out of water. <laughs> and all these little ghost fish were swimming around in their ghost fishy way, like, and it was a really weird and spooky sight and everyone took a moment to think about that <sighs> and then at the front of the ghost ship they spotted someone man in the big ghost ship wheel that they always have I don't know quite how it steers the boat maybe it's a rudder probably a rudder <laughs> anyway there was someone there and that someone was someone they'd never met before. Alexander and Christopher thought there's nothing else for it. We're just going to have to say hello. What could go wrong? 
they said. Ahoy there! What be your name? Because that's how you talk to boat people, sailors and the like. And the person on the boat looked down at them and went, I am Captain Ghost Beard. The angriest ghost pirate, not pirate, ghost fisherman that you've ever met. And Alexander and Christopher said, Yep, that sounds about right. You definitely want to look like the angriest ghost pirate that we've ever met. But there again, we've never met a ghost pirate. And Aunt Elise said, No, we've never met a ghost pirate. Not pirates! Ghost fishermen! <clears throat> And as the boat got even closer, they started to smell a very fishy smell. I mean, it was literally fishy. And Alexander and Christopher were like, Oh, dear, your boat is so stinky. Captain Ghostbeard, his beard was just made of ghost fish. That were all going... And he went, You are such rude little boys. I'm going to teach you. A valuable lesson. And Alexander and Christopher went, Oh! Don't! Oh, this was a bad idea. Now, Captain Ghostbeard had got out his ghost net and he launched it towards Alexander and Christopher and Auntie Lisa and grew on their boat. And the net was just starting to reach towards them when <laughs> Captain Blackpaw smashed his boat into Captain Ghostbeard's boat with a most enormous crash. <laughs> Captain Boat Ghost Beard turned around and he looked at Captain Blackpaw and he said, You! What did you do that? Oh, and he fell over. Captain Blackpaw was like, Ha 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 ha! I got you again, Captain Ghost Beard! Ha, ha, ha. Ooh, what will we be having over here? And Alexander and Christopher and Aunt Lisa were like, ah, nothing to see here. We're just here. We were having a day out. And uh, we bumped into you guys. Captain Ghostbeard, bat poor, said, ha, ah, you horrible scurvy sea swaggers. You come here to save the day, have you? Come here to save the day. Come here to help. Your friend, Captain Ghostbeard. Alexander Christophe said, he's not our friend, he's been quite mean. Captain Blackpool went, Ugh. good, glad to hear it. Mm. And he pushed his boat even harder into Captain Ghostbeard's boat. And Captain Ghostbeard's ghost boat broke in two. And the ghost fish went... And they flew all over the place. And Captain Ghostbeard fell into the sea. And he said in his last cries as his ghost sank down into the depths of the sea, I'll get you for this, Captain Blackpaw. And he disappeared. Captain Blackpaw turned around to the swamp ship that had just arrived. And he went, I lived it again. It was amazing. I love killing that captain, Ghost Bill. It's the best. Well, at that moment, the swamp ship crew were laughing and laughing and laughing. And Alexander and Christopher and Aunt Elisa started to feel a tiny bit sorry for Captain Ghost Bill. All the other ghost seafaring folk were being so mean. But the only thing they could do now was zap those ghosts before they decided to turn on them. 
So Alexander, Christopher, Aunt Lisa, and Gru, because he was there too, went like this. <gasps> and all the ghosts went. <laughs> they hadn't been got. The sea had saved them. They disappeared back down into the depths. Well, Gru was super relieved. He said, You guys, I think we saved the day. And Alexander and Christopher said, I don't think we've saved the day. I think that was just a ghost story being relived right now. It must be that Captain Blackpool killed Captain Ghostbeard. I wonder if we'll ever find out why. Maybe just because he was really mean. <laughs> well, Gru said, Hey, I think we should all go back to the beach. I smashed up your sandcastle and I feel really bad about it. Shall we go back to the beach now? And Alexander and Christoph said, Yeah, that'd be great. <clears throat> but first, I wonder if we could do a little detour. And Gru said, well, okay. And he said, can we try out my new invisibility in my submarine mode? And Alexander and Christopher said, hmm, yes, I think that would be uh, super cool, amazing. So, Captain, no, not Captain, so Gru and everybody climbed inside the boat <clears throat> and they shut up all the shutters on the boat and it pressed the button and the boat went into a submarine. And then he pressed another button bing, into invisibility mode. Ooh. Now. Just at that moment, <clears throat> Andy called. And they were like, what? We didn't think Andy was gonna make it into this story. Okay, Andy. And Alexander was like, Andy, Andy, what's up? <clears throat> and Andy said, you guys, you guys, you've got to help me. And Alexander was said, what have you done now, Andy? And he said, oh, I know you told me not to do this again, but. <sighs> I went back in time. Triceratops has escaped. I think it's gone for a swim in the sea. But every time I try and catch it, it spots me and runs away. And Alexander and Christopher and Aunt Elisa and Gru were like, what could we do to help? Wow. They had an idea. They said, Andy, leave it with us. And they went in invisibility mode, all searching up and down the beaches. Not the beach, you know, the sea by the beach. When all the fishes didn't even know they were there. They got really close up views of all the cooler animals, like the turtles and the seahorses and the sea lions and the manta rays and the sharks. Nothing could see them. Sometimes they bumped into things, but basically, it was super cool. And they were going along when suddenly they spotted Triceratops legs swimming around in the sea. <coughs> and they said, right, we found him. How are we gonna catch him? And they said, we need a net. Where are we gonna get a net from? And Gru said, don't worry, don't you worry, I've got a net. So, they stealthily crept up to the swimming triceratops. I mean, it looked so funny. If you've ever seen hippopotamuses swim, this is what it looked like, but with more horns. And they said, okay. <clears throat> and the triceratops was swimming away. It kind of must have sensed that something was wrong. And then Alexander and Christopher pressed the net release button and a big net went and caught that triceratops and the triceratops was like ah. and then Aunt Lisa said, uh, you guys, 
What if we accidentally drown the Triceratops? That would be horrific and terrible and sad. And Alexander and Christopher and Gru said, Good point, Aunt Elisa. He can't keep swimming now he's in that net. And Gru said, Don't worry. And he pressed another button. And do you know what that submarine turned into? An aeroplane. And it went... And the Triceratops was dangling from underneath the aeroplane, like, ah, uh, uh. And they zoomed that Triceratops through the sky in proper stealth mode all the way to where Andy was in the park with his ma magical clock. And they dropped that, well, they didn't drop it, they lowered the Triceratops into the, onto the ground of the park. <clears throat> and then they parked the, uh, or landed the plane. It was one of those stealth planes that can hover. Very cool. Anyway, they landed the plane and they all jumped out. And Andy said, oh, you guys, you got him. Thank you so much. I never thought that I would be able to get this Triceratops back. <sighs> and just in time too. Quick, get him out of that net before he completely loses the plot. We need to get him back to the dinosaur times. And with that, the clock went dung, dung, dung. And they tore open the net and they give that triceratops a boop on the bottom and it ran straight into the clock. Back to dinosaur times. What a relief. Well, with that job done, Andy said, hey, what have you guys been up to? And Alexander and Christopher and Auntie Lisa and Gru looked at each other and they were like, I don't think you'd believe us, even if we told you. And Andy said, you can tell me about it over some tea and cake. And everyone said, that sounds super duper. And so that's what they did. They all had a nice cup of tea and some cake. And they told Andy the story of how they'd met a new ghost called Captain Ghost Beard. And that is the end of the story. Night, night. Love you. Mwah.